My name is Huda Al Khazemi. I'm the director for Center for Cybersecurity in New York University, Abu Dhabi. I'm also assistant research assistant professor in in Department of Engineering. My my research is centered around uh, developing and uh, cryptanalyzing crypto primitives. But at the same time, sometimes we sway away from that trajectory and we work on certain research areas like avionic security and autonomous car security and, you know, attacking Alexa sometimes, anything that has digital or automation purposes, we try to just tackle it a little bit. I don't know where is the clicker. If you can help me with the clicker, I'd be very, is it there? Okay. Just gonna, thanks. So today we're going to talk about autonomous car security and I'm going to share with you a bit of the results that we've had in, in our labs where they were amazing students. I don't know if you had a chance to see them in the Cryptics Village uh, yesterday. Today they cannot be here because they have classes and they have deadlines. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the landscape a little bit, and we're going to talk about the challenges and opportunities that exist. So autonomous car security, a global landscape. Before we start here, who is driving Tesla in the room? I know it's just a wave that's taking over the countries. I was in Netherlands last month, and I was chauffeured by Tesla and all of the Honda and all of the, you know, amazing car uh, systems or car companies that they're aiming to go on the top of the pyramid when it comes to autonomous cars, uh, develop, developers in the world. So who did actually try it? At least you're not driving it. You're not trying it. Good. Perfect. So I would like to just to start by, before just jumping into the, into the scene and onto what we are trying to do, I want to share with you just a bit of, uh, information about what is AI and versus deep learning. So I just want to use this. I don't know. Do you know the character in the picture? He is John McCarthy, 1956. This guy decided to break the silos that exist within these communities and brought all of people who are existing within biology departments or mainly uh, robotics, uh, 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 computer vision, and um, Neural network analysis and all of these people who do natural language processing together in one uh, winter school, and he said we need to come up to come up with a new way of defining this field that we're doing, and we need to break the silos that we are having when we develop this. So at the end of this winter school, 1956, they decided to call it artificial intelligence. So it's not a new concept. It's a concept that existed way back. And when we break the shells, and um, since 2016 and World Economic Forum and they de them deciding that the next industrial revolution is about artificial intelligence, we're been bombarded by requests of research proposal on artificial intelligence and everything. So we have people who told us, are you using AI in your crypto analysis? Are you using AI in your chip development? Are you using AI? In so we have to sit and take a deep breath and try to tell them that actually certain algorithms have been used since centuries uh, for, for, for long decades in, in, in the field. And, and we try to tell them, okay, so we have this glorified picture of identifying where are we at when we are using different algorithms. Um, we know that the world is moving toward digitalization. We're expecting more than 50 billion devices. So we're working with a, with a huge number of smart devices, uh, per country. It would be around 258 million devices per country. And for us as people who are developing security solutions or security algorithm, we're a bit wary about this wave. Are we there yet when it comes to catching up with technology? Technology is taking strides in the future. And sometimes I do have the feeling that we're still using 1980s, 1970s algorithm and we're not catching up as fast as we need to uh, in, in building these technology. And this is why we're trying through the Center for Cybersecurity to endorse R&D, uh, you know, efforts because we want to bridge this gap that exists between academia and between industry or governments uh, because issues like autonomous cars are not 
issues that are supposed to be solved within a lab or within a research community. We're expecting by 2025 uh, to have around 3.5 uh, $7.3 billion in investment from only semiconductors industries and autonomous cars. You see, that's a different industry investing in, in a whole wave of, of, uh, of uh, automobile kind of uh, systems that normally was, was a district for car manufacturers. So it's not anymore the game. Uh, we have certain surveys that uh, was in the I don't know what to do with the mic, so I'm sorry for all of the <laughs> um, echoes in, in the mic. But uh, we have certain surveys that were there to capture the attention of the audience to see the, their perception to use these technologies. And you get to see countries like China, for example, being afraid from the certain levels of attacks that they would be exposed to. But, um, but they're also they don't care about the privacy issues that comes with using these these cars. So how can we build a holistic model? We need to start from the beginning and understand what's the evolution of this. We, we did have autonomous uh, car attempts uh, since, um, since 1970. I don't know, 1970 and 1980, um, uh, there was a trial. Uh, by Darba Research, when they tried to motivate the community, thank you so much, when they tried to c motivate the community to push for the first autonomous tank. So they asked the community of robotics to push this tank to move autonomously for 18 miles, and whoever will win this challenge will, will have around $1.6 million. And no one at that time got the grant. So... For, go, moving from that period to this period where we have a huge level of automation induced in different um, industries, we get to see Tesla right now uh, trying their first prototype and open, I don't know if you, if you uh, heard about the news in August when Tesla tried to use their autopiloted prototypes in, in, in open mixed traffic. And we have also the one uh, for... Uh, for Uber, Uber right now with uh, certain Uber cars would have autopilot devices in them, which is semi uh, autom uh, autonomous. Um, and you get to see the people who are leading this industry. Okay, I use the wrong button. <laughs> who are leading this industry are not anymore, as I've said, um, car manufacturers expected to, because we don't know who's going to lead yet. And this is a very historic, you know. A collaboration picture between the CEO of Intel uh, at that time and uh, PMW announcing the prototype of autonomous car. And it's not only um, semiconductor industries or um, or like uh, car manufacturers, but there's, there is a whole, huge consortium uh, that comes together to build an autonomous car system. You have the developers who would develop the software. You have the people who would develop the engine where and all of these things. I don't, um, and um, I don't know if, if you heard of Dubai World, uh, Dubai Autonomous World Challenge, Autonomous Car World Challenge that was announced last year and we got around, um, 350 to 400 submissions from major industries that they're building with their autonomous cars. And we put in the judging community, we have this uh, one sector where we asked everyone if they addressed cybersecurity issues within their solutions. Among the only, I would say only 10%, less than 10% only address cybersecurity issues or have an awareness of cybersecurity issues to the proposed solution that they put into the market. So when it comes to building this, we need a very, um, we need a holistic approach. We need the stakeholders to group together to build a, res uh, to enable, enable to be able to build the proper policies of not only developing these autonomous cars, but also using them uh, in open environments, <laughs> not in the test beds, uh, and build measurable models for all of these things. Okay? So let's go 
from the utopian view, why we are moving to uh, autonomous cars? Because we want to have um, safe driving skills. We want to minimize traffic and all of these things. That just utopian view. It's we will we will ha still have failures. We will have attacks, and the security is an issue for all of us. I don't know if you. <laughs> I will show you this if I managed how to. I don't know how to click on this using maybe my amazing clicker. Okay, let's. I can't see it. I don't know if you see it. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful video, but not that beautiful, I think. We should skip it, maybe. It's a video of of a driver that puts out their car. It's Uber driver in, in September 2018 who puts the car in auto driving mode and they were just driving and the passenger um, on the street, uh, not the passenger, the pedestrian on the street uh, with a bike, they hit the pedestrian and the pedestrian uh, passed away, unfortunately. And the Google, uh, the Uber driver was just uh, horrified at this incident. So obviously, the object detection algorithm or something here did not work well. And we have also the incident that I've mentioned before on the Tesla driving car that um, failed to detect a truck on, on a certain turn and, and they just uh, hit the truck. So, I mean, whatever we develop in the lab, we need to test properly. So um, we had this competition with me and my students and we got, okay, let's analyze what's on a car. And I'm sure you've been there to the uh, car hacking uh, booth on the other side. So I hope that you would enjoy it. Um, and without an, uh, having an autonomous system, we do have very hackable, I would say, environment, a very much hackable live environment because you have a ton, uh, you have certain electrical systems that you could hack into um, certain units and the ACU that you could just manipulate at the same time. Um, and then when you do have this kind of a breakthrough, I'm sorry for the resolution, then you realize that you can just have a taxonomy, the regular taxonomy of attacks that you normally have on any computer system be applied on, on, on a, on a car. Um, what we are interested in in our labs is, is scenarios like rerouting the car itinerary and um, GPS spoofing uh, in order to just also um, play with the mapping data that's being uh, perceived by the car, play with the object detection algorithms, maybe through adversarial learning examples and building generators um, in order to just also uh, manipulate um, um, the detection of the images that comes through uh, through the 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 car systems so uh, so the goal of uh, I will just show you a bit of what we did uh, the goal of, of this uh, one segment of the project is to build an object detector for autonomous uh, car vehicles and then uh, we have a requirement for the students so we told them you don't have to we don't want to just you to develop any any kind of object detection, but something that's lightweight and very efficient, hopefully, which is also for them, if they care about efficiency, they would endanger security somehow, I'll just explain later on. And then be able to build a generator that can attack the object detection using adversarial example to fool the deep learning uh, system and the car. So the, the algorithm that they picked is YOLO, that we picked is YOLO because once we um, we did this, we discovered that yes, it's faster than other um, and lighter than other algorithms. On on because then we can build it into put it in our own simulator or just inject it onto simulators that exist online, like Kudacities or Carla and other simulators. That hopefully it's going to be easy. So we worked with Kudacity with Carla. We're facing some issues, so we're doing our best at that. Um, and then. For YOLO, for example, we use single regression problem. So you look at once at the image and then you try to uh, build a global reasoning as fast as possible onto the system in order to detect certain objects. So if you have a grid of n times n or s times n, 
for example, this times seven times seven, then you would be able to know where are the regions for the car, where are the regions for the bike and the other objects in here with certain certainty, of course. And what we did is we used this level of certainties later on to be able to decide what level of attacks could work on this. And we and uh, worked with what we call one pixel attack and my team is working as well with three pixel attacks and four pixel attacks but we thought that if we can make it work for one pixel it's the best scenario it means it's uh, we reached a high level of vulnerability so um we oh, I, I don't know if you're familiar with with the attacks that were published on autonomous cars so we have few attacks that it's called uh, robust physical attacks and the merit of the attack, I'll explain it later, later on. And defense, um, defensive distillation attacks and evolutionary algorithms attacks. So this is an example of a robust physical attack. So the, what a team in, uh, UC Berkeley did is they cover the, uh, images on, or they manipulated the traffic, uh, signs across towns. So whenever a car will be just detecting these signs will be, and instead of being able to detect a stop sign, then it would be just not, not, so it will not be read properly by the system. And then maybe it will perceive this stop sign as a go sign or something like this. So you could see all of these elements that they put around here to fool the object detection. So they physically manipulated the signs. And we wanted to do something similar on Audacity, so, um, um, which is a platform that w is created to simulate kind of autonomous car platform. So we have a training model where you, uh, where we will train the steering devices, the steering angle of the, of the wheel. Um, and after doing this, what we did is we, we trained it on uh, different progression values, progressive values in order to change the weights and the adjustments uh, that could be detected uh, by the car. And after doing this, uh, on the autonomous mode, we injected our, um, so, uh, this is the normal way of happening. Uh, if it's happening, you inject the model that you want, uh, to be used, uh, when you are on autonomous mode. So we build our adversarial sample and the goal is to produce minimally altered images that could be very difficult for the deep learning model to detect uh, false uh, positives okay um so it's it's uh, somehow similar to the physical attacks but we do it in a hard, <laughs> the hard way using adversarial learning algorithms so we try to just um play with the pixels once at one at a time and just feed them into the training mode and then the goal is to reduce the confidence of the algorithm, uh, introduce misclassification of these signs, and uh, introduce targeted misclassification for certain signs or uh, or for certain source and targets. Um, and this is an example, a textbook example that you could see of adversarial nodes. You barely notice it with a human eye, and sometimes it works for uh, um, some algorithmic uh, data. And um, yeah. And okay. So, and then we, we built two variations of the attack and it worked for steering the angle of the car and changing a bit of, and hence we changed the itinerary, uh, of the car on the model. So I'm not going to go into details on all of this. So this is how, this is specifically what I said before. So we just did the one pixel attack and differential evolution model. So one step at a time. Um, and then we feed it into audacity. So this is the ultimate goal. To, we changed actually the speeding angle. This thing worked for us. We changed the, the central images, the right images, uh, and we changed as well the the angle of the steering wheel. Uh, we're still working with the throttle. And then, yeah, we it happened and we fold the audacity classifier. So we have certain images where you see the dif uh, differential, um, the distance between two, uh, between two uh, pictures are different, but they're all perceived by classifiers are being positive input. So, so for our future work, we're working to improve this classifier by tampering, uh, with, uh, 
by tampering with the classifier at, at a higher level than what is just presented. Uh, but we also aim to just go into GPS proofing into the next cycle of these attacks. So thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> we'll have a demo. We have a small demo about this in our amazing booth. If our students are here, they will be more than happy to just help you. Thanks. So, any questions from the room? Any questions from the room? So, I, I really noticed this topic getting more and more popular. There's a lot about uh, autonomous cars uh, here at the event as well. Object recognition right next to the uh, autonomous car uh, uh, village. Yes, I saw Dylan doing amazing work with his object detection. Actually, our students were really... Um, Thank you so much. So um, I've, I've noticed that our students were really motivated by the topic. Um, they built, they tried to build a deep learning computer with Dylan so they can just attack the autonomous cars. I think what Dylan has is real, uh, we could classify it as real data because he has an MIT uh, car and he has donkey car and these are supposed to be autonomous models on trial mode, the small cars. And then it would be interesting for us in the lab to just look into them and try to just, you know, play a little bit with attacking the system in there. Yeah. Yeah, and Dylan also spoke, spoke about uh, having some cars available for uh, next year's event where they're going to do yes. uh, racing with autonomous cars. Yeah. So anybody interested should go to the car hacking village. Exactly. And 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 uh, uh, if you do not have one yourself, you can register uh, there for one of the available cars. Uh, that will be fun and uh, uh, very edu educational as well. And of course, if you have your own gear, you can bring that and attend the race as well. There, there are some rules for the race, yeah. but they're not really clear at this moment, what I understood, but they will be announced later on. Yeah. Uh, are you attending there? I am, I am, definitely. I'll have my students just try to ruin the race for Dylan, but just, you know, stopping some cars and make sure our cars are leading. <laughs> I, I would like to see you beat yeah. Dylan. <laughs> I'll try. Okay. Thank you for Thank your you talk. Thank you so much. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant.